marvel at this controller. How beautiful. This is the DJ Dao Easy Max Plus. For the most hardcore rhythm gamers, this is as close to endgame as it gets. Is it a little excessive? Maybe. But my god, is it visually striking. And it feels really nice to game on it. But now, it's time to answer the burning question. Will this thing even work on Steam Deck? There's only one way to find out. No doubt about it, this is a massive box. Probably the biggest thing I've unboxed on this channel. Obviously, the product itself isn't this big, but it's still a very big controller, especially if you're unaccustomed to things like fight sticks. It is worth mentioning that there is a lot of protection here. When it comes to shipping things overseas, there's no such thing as too much protection. Either you have enough protection, or you have too little protection. This is a controller itself, but before we do that, let's look at everything else that comes in the box as well. Inside this product box, you don't have too much. You have two cables and an instruction manual. So this right here is a USB-A to USB type B connector. And right here, you have a USB-A to USB-C connector. These aren't proprietary wires or anything. In fact, upon closer inspection, these wires are actually from Ugreen. So yeah, if these wires break, you can just buy another one from Amazon. So I know, normally in a typical unboxing, we would just kind of ignore the instruction manuals. But here, the instruction manual is very important. It tells you everything you need to know about this product in four different languages. And it tells you all the modes that you can access, of which there are many. So this is the controller itself. Let's get this out of the way. I'm pretty sure this can't actually function as an actual DJ turntable. It would be pretty sick though. Also, there's a ton of plastic you can peel off, not just on the turntables, but also on each individual button. So be sure to peel those off before you get started. So here's the interesting part about this controller. It has both a USB type B connector and a USB type C connector. Does that mean this controller needs both of them? According to the official instructions, they recommend to use both connectors. And I'll admit, it sounds a bit excessive, but in actuality, you only really need one cable. The USB Type B cable. The Type C one powers your RGB. The RGB does look real nice, but it's not strictly necessary if all you want to do is play games. You could plug your Type-C connector into a power brick, or you could just also have it plugged into the Steam Deck dock. I think this is the part where I talk about the layout. The controller has multiple different modes of control. See, this controller can be used on a PS4, or Nintendo Switch, or a PC, and you can switch between those layouts on the fly. The controller also has multiple different controller profiles depending on what game you're trying to play. For example, it has specific controls for Project Diva, two different ones at that. You can also have this set to keep keyboard mode and keyboard and mouse mode, with the turntables being your mouse movements. So depending on what layout you end up using, the Steam Deck can recognize it as either a PS4 controller, or a Switch Pro controller, or a generic controller, or a keyboard and mouse. For more details on what modes exist, I would consult the manual. There are a ton of rhythm games out there. On Steam alone, there's no shortage of rhythm games out there, but you can always go beyond Steam to get more rhythm games. This right here is unbeatable. This game in particular is primarily two buttons to control the action. At times, White Label does have segments where you explore the world with your character. But this is a fully featured controller, so you should have no issues whatsoever. You know, aside from having to adjust to the fact that you're actually, like, moving around. But most of the game is primarily this rhythm game, so there's that. For this game, you'll want to use the Switch Pro layout, because it acts weird when you use the PS4 layout. I'm not sure why. Once upon a time, I used to be pretty good at DJ Max. Obviously not like the best player in the world, but I would say pretty decent. Nowadays, I'm nowhere near as good as I used to be. Now this is what the controller was made for. You can go all the way up to eight keys if you're good enough, but I'm not good enough, so I'm gonna stick with four keys. The game feels quite responsive, as does the controller. It feels like I'm actually hitting the buttons on the music cue. Maybe one day I'll be good enough to do eight keys, until then though, here's some 4 key gameplay. So you may be asking yourself, where's the turntable action? Don't you worry, I got you covered. 
This right here is Spin Rhythm XD. Yes, the game does have controller support. Using generic controller support doesn't work the way you expect it to, but DJ Dao has you covered. There's a specific mouse and keyboard layout meant for games like Osu and also Spin Rhythm XD. In this case, the Easy Max reads out the turntables as a mouse, with the left turntable doing X axis motions and the right turntables doing Y axis motions. I do wish the Easy Max had customizable controls. Gamma 2's K28 has this feature. Who knows, maybe in a firmware update we can get this feature. Or maybe they can make software that lets you do this. Either way, I think there's a clear need for a feature like this. Of course, this is not a cheap controller. What'll happen when the buttons wear down? And at the rate of which you're pressing buttons in some rhythm games, the buttons are gonna wear out. Thankfully, DJ Dao has made it pretty easy. Screwdrivers? Where we're going, we don't need screwdrivers. The bottom panel is held magnetically, meaning all you need is a bit of force to pull it out. If you're familiar with working in an arcade stick, the principle is fairly similar. You can see the controller board at the top, and you can see all the buttons. I have worked in fight sticks before, but I've never worked in 2DX style controllers, so I'm not entirely sure how to go about doing this. But I'm sure there's a guide out there somewhere. But on the Gamma 2 website, you can actually purchase replacement parts, or even better quality parts if you prefer Sanwa buttons. I wonder if Seimitsu makes any Beatmania style buttons. I think I may have mentioned this earlier in passing, but this does work on PS4 and Switch, and I guess it's a good excuse to film some Switch gameplay. So you may be wondering, is this recommendable? Can I really recommend this to the average gamer? I can tell you right now, this product is not for the average gamer. It's for a specific subset of gamers, rhythm gamers. I can't perceive any input lag from this controller. Furthermore, the buttons feel very nice in my hands. This controller weighs slightly more than the average fight stick at around 8.82 pounds or four kilograms. It's both a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because the controller is not gonna rattle around when you press buttons intensely. But it's a curse because it makes it difficult to transport this controller with you basically wherever you want. That said, this is a very nice controller. Obviously for 280 bucks, it may not be worth it for everyone, but if you're a specific kind of rhythm gamer, this may be worth it to you. There are two things that I wish for though. First and foremost being a headphone jack, and second being customizable controls to make sure that this works with every game that you wanna play maybe for a future revision. If you like high-tech lowlife, you should check out the rest of my channel. And if you like the rest of my channel, you should like, subscribe, and spread the good gospel of high-tech lowlife. Furthermore, we have a community Discord server. There's a link in the description down below. Check us out.